Okay, so this is going to be a much more detailed analysis of the actual SpaceX rocket explosion. Uh, so this is the last video over here where it was uh, mostly going over a lot of the more general stuff about rockets, like, you know, how you have to call the bells and all the turbo pumps and that sort of thing. So this is now going to be the actual much more technical details of what you can get off the SpaceX uh, rocket explosion footage. So let's start with just listening to the whole thing from the start. So let's... Boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11. So it's about 12 seconds and sound travels at about 300 meters per second at a kilometer every three seconds. So we're about four kilometers away from this explosion. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to synchronize up the audio. It's unlocked. So we need the explosion. The explosion is there. So I can go through it frame by frame and we'll do quite a lot of this. And there's our UFO, yay! So, frame by frame, and that's where the bee <laughs> uh, destroys the space rocket. Anyway, okay, so that's the frame of the explosion. So that really wants to be the first frame where we have the audio. It's about there somewhere. There we go, perfect. Okay, so the audio is now synchronized, and it goes boom, and it goes boom in a very convincing fashion. So, that's actually, oh, and then the second stage falls down, which also uh, <laughs> explodes. Um, right, so, what you've got on the upstage here is a liquid oxygen tank, and then below it is uh, essentially a kerosene tank. It's this, more or less the same stuff in sheen gas. And the lower stage is basically a verbatim repeat of the upper stage, but with larger quantities. So it's a bigger tank of liquid oxygen, bigger tank of kerosene. Now, liquid oxygen is very cold. It's like minus 200 or something. And so all this white smoke that you get um, is basically what you get when you get a, a, any cryogenic gas spill. And I think most of it's uh, just condensation in the air. Um, which gives you this this cloud effect. Now, kerosene, on the other hand, uh, when in air, it just burns like petrol. It's, it's basically a giant fire, um, petrol bomb. So liquid oxygen, of course, you throw into the atmosphere. It won't do anything on its own. If it's mixed with gas, it'll give you a bigger explosion. But uh, gas, if you just throw it into the atmosphere when it's lit, you just basically just get a giant petrol bomb. So why then does it explode later? You get uh, you all the all the gas coming down here. Why do you get the second explosion? Now, if you actually look in more detail, so I'm going to actually zoom in a bit on this. Let's zoom in on my rocket. Let's center him up as well. Okay. So what you'll find is the almost immediately after the explosion, the tanks here are actually pretty lightweight. Yeah, they're not that they don't take much higher pressure than say a Coke can or something. It's you know, a fraction of an excess of an atmosphere. So when you actually you get this big explosion on the top, it basically overpressurizes and ruptures the liquid oxygen tank of the lower stage here. So what you'll see is this is the liquid oxygen coming out of the lower stage. And so boom, this is the failure of the lower tank. And it's when, in fact, you can actually see the explosions where the um, the gas is basically mixing with the liquid oxygen on the way down. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. But it's so the liquid oxygen gets to the ground first and it's when the gas hits it from on top, that's when you're gonna get the second explosion. So what, what you've got is the gas from the upper stage is going to mix with the liquid oxygen from the lower stage, and that's what's going to give you this second explosion. Right, when the two mix on the ground, boom, that's when you get the second big explosion. And then the, the satellite has its own propellants on board, which also give you a bit of an explosion. 
Okay, so that's it's peripheral. That that's basically what gives you the big explosion. Because otherwise, this is just essentially a giant tanker truck full of gas. You know, it shouldn't actually explode. It should just burn. Uh, so yeah, you, most of your cryogenic gases just sort of shoot off to the side, and it's the, the the gas from the lower stage mixing with the propellant from the upper stage, which is what gives you the gives you the boom. Right. Okay. So, what else can we learn about this? Well, let's listen to the actual audio. There's a squeak and a pop. About five seconds before the explosion. So, squeak, pop, and boom. Okay. So, you've got some peculiar sounds on here, and this is one of the reasons why the SpaceX folk were absolutely desperate for some other footage of this rocket explosion. In fact, it's mind-blowing that they were putting up a rocket that's you know, 65, cost $65 million, and they weren't videoing it themselves, right? They, they basically are begging for other people to give them uh, footage when, you know, for a... Uh, for a couple of hundred bucks, you could have actually set up their own their own camera for this, but uh, it wasn't done. And so now comes the problem: is that squeak local? The the, the pop certainly sounds like it actually comes from the rocket. Now you got to bear in mind that we're four kilometers away from this. So is that squeak real, or you know, is it a local sound that um, is doing that, or is it actually coming from the rocket four kilometers away? The pop certainly sounds like it's coming from the rocket. And it's only five seconds before the explosion. The squeak, I've listened to the rest of the audio, and there's no other sort of squeaky type sounds on it, which does sort of suggest that you've got something that's fatiguing, then breaking, and then you've got what sounds like a small explosion. Pop. And it's curiously, you know, just a few seconds before the actual explosion. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in way up close and personal to the actual rocket. Now, there are no real... There's nothing that you can really see from this footage with either the squeak or the pop that um, obviously changes... Um, the, there is no obvious image of an explosion or something. Uh, to the outside anyway so this is a schematic I found of the Falcon 9 and uh, what I'm going to do just to show that those images are actually fairly well lined up is, is this going to work? yes excellent is I'm just going to sort of line up where the oxygen tank is I'll put one on here just to sort of show that the, the fairings all lined up let's go one for the bottom of the the oxygen tank and whatever one for the bottom of the fuel tank we'll see where our explosion comes from okay and our explosion comes from right on the mixing side of the liquid oxygen and the fuel tank okay so it's basically a no-brainer that they've actually had a failure in this wall here and it turns out this is actually legitimate that to save weight on the rocket uh, there is actually these two uh, the propellant the liquid oxygen and the fuel tank share a common um, common wall so it's not like there's one wall for the fuel tank and one wall for the liquid oxygen there's just one shell that separates the two now it's great for saving weight uh, however, it does mean that if you actually manage to rupture this somehow, then um, you've got <laughs> your propellants mixing directly, which is probably going to end badly. So, um, now it turns out that, like I was saying, these, 
these tanks here, they're actually pretty lightweight. They take relatively modest pressure. And they need to be somewhat pressurized to actually help with the feed for the rocket. Um, and so that's actually usually done by high pressure helium cylinders. You have these high pressure helium cylinders that basically fill up the tank um, to sort of, you know, because obviously if you flush all of the, the oxygen out, there's going to be essentially a partial vacuum in here, which will make it harder to get into the engines. So uh, the tanks are filled up with helium from the top. And I don't know where those helium tanks are here, but, you know, it's one of the obvious things that if one of those helium cylinders, the high pressure helium cylinders has actually overpressurized or caused damage to the liquid oxygen tank in some way, that you've actually got mixing there. then you've got direct mixing after that of the liquid oxygen and the fuel and that's your boom and I did actually do yeah I did my estimates on this and came out with about I think it was a third of a ton of fuel is basically what you had mixing here uh, can I find that there we go so you take the rough size of the fireball and you can sort of extrapolate it back to give you an estimate of how much fuel was actually mixed um, and I think it's about it's about 100 tons of propellant in the upper stage so it's um, and you've only mixed one ton of it and the problem is the video is kind of grainy so if, I'm going to put some extra contrast onto the video and uh, now yeah arguably there is actually a sort of change that happens here with the pop Yeah. So uh, the question is, can you actually do any sort of image enhancement on this yeah, really quite grainy video? So you can um, load in video to a program like Registax, and then you just got to set some align points like that. Set some align points, um, align it. You know, it just takes a few seconds. Um, and yeah, then you just stack all the images up. Like that. Um, and, you know, instantly you've got a, a sort of enhanced image like that. And then you can actually do some sort of wavelet processing on this if you're, if you're keen. Um, with the contrast and brightness uh, okay so that's how you can sort of do some level of image enhancement on you know so you take lots of frames from the video and try and actually enhance the image from that and then you do it just before the explosion just before that little pop and then afterwards and see if you can spot a difference between the two that's what the unprocessed video looks like okay and I'm going to take a few seconds there and average it up and I get something like that. First one is after the pop, which means, okay, let's swap these around. Okay, like that. So now comes the question, can you see any difference before the pop and after? And the answer is yeah, not really. Um, arguably, there is a difference here which is actually again you know this is pretty close to um uh yeah where where you might expect there to be some some change um so it, it's conceivable that if you did actually have one of these tanks over pressurizing that you would actually see a, a deformation a dent on the outside of of, of the vehicle um whether you see that, and that, I mean, there is a change in the lighting here, but it could be uh, simply that this this is the vent off. When you fill these tanks with liquid oxygen, uh, the way you cool down the tank is you basically pour liquid oxygen into it, and that when it evaporates, uh, that cools down the actual tank uh, until it gets to the right temperature. So you always get some boil off of the cryogenic gas, which is what you're looking at here. So it could just be that your, your shadow from your boil-off is different between these two. 
or it could be that there's maybe a difference there. Um, not exactly something you would go to the wall for, but... Anyway, so that's a more detailed analysis of uh, this, this explosion. As you see, I mean, the most important thing is it is exactly on the mixing between the liquid oxygen and the fuel tank. So they've, they've definitely had a rupture on this tank. What then causes, I mean, once you've ruptured one of these tanks, the rocket is doomed, right? Because irrespective of if you're burning the fuel here, uh, it, it'll it'll detonate in the in where it's been mixed at some point. So with the SpaceX thing, they made this thing that oh, there's no ignition source. Well, yes and no. I mean, the real problem is that once you've got maybe a third of a ton of liquid oxygen and fuel mixed together, the rocket is absolutely doomed. There's just no real way to save it. Uh, you know, because if you spark at the motors, the whole thing will just blow up anyway. So there are, there are various things that might get you an explosion here. The first is if there's some sort of peroxide or something actually formed with a kerosene, those can be unstable, they can cause explosions. Uh, then a second one would essentially be uh, electrostatics. So there are various ways that you can do that. When the, you mix these two, there'll be lots of the liquid oxygen will boil once it gets into the fuel because this boils at minus 200. This is uh, at about you know minus 10 or something. So the oxygen will boil almost immediately. It gets into the, the fuel. All that gas moving around can essentially give you a static charge buildup. So that can give you a spark, which would give you an explosion. Or alternatively, once the liquid oxygen gets into the fuel, it can actually, it, well, it will. It'll just start freezing the fuel. And those, the... Um, the crystallization, the, the freezing itself, can also build up sort of static charges, which can give you a, a spark, which, you know, in, when, once you've got these two mixed, you're just completely screwed. So, anyway, that's the basic details of the SpaceX explosion.